So it's baby budgie update time. So this is the oldest. And it looks like it's going to be a bit like Io. So it's got this lovely yellow, but and it has just pooed on me. Uh, if you look underneath here, you can see it's starting to get some green. So it's a very cute little one. Hello. I know, I need to put you down so I can show your sibling. And then I've left the smallest one inside, and then this is the other one. So this is less yellow, but this is now this is the strange thing. If you look under here, um, there is some blue. So you can see some green there, but there's also a few blue feathers coming through. So this one is going to be very pretty. You can see there on above its tail some blue. So, uh, yeah, they're all doing really, really well, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, I know. Look at you, scrappy little thing. And number three is doing great as well. But I just like to leave the third one inside so that Sunny doesn't get completely stressed when her chicks aren't in there. Okay, okay, we'll go back in. So a quick update on the state of these Ixworth eggs. So yeah, I've got 10 here and we are now uh, 12 days in, so we're over halfway. And as I said last time, we've got 10 eggs um, and eight are viable. So this egg is infertile and this egg is dead. I do like to keep those eggs in though, just to keep them all um, upright so they turn properly so they don't roll. When it comes to hatching and I go put them into lockdown, I'll take obviously out the eggs that aren't fertile. Um, we are in winter and so you tend to get a, a lower hatch rate uh, just because of fertility issues and things like that. So I'm very happy to find that um, eight of the 10 eggs are fertile um, and we will just see. So they should be hatching the 1st and 2nd of January. I might even do like an hour's live stream uh, just literally focusing on the hatch uh, so you can see them hatching out hopefully fingers crossed if that happens um, but i'm not going to let them get too cold i'm going to pop them back into the incubator to keep them nice and warm um, so keep your fingers crossed for little baby ixworths in just over a week so there are some days when i just feel really down um and i don't feel particularly awful today but just lethargic no energy and you know what's getting me through? Coming into the spare bedroom and watching the birds. And it's actually cold in the house today, so I'm actually, I'm in bed. So I'm actually lying in bed watching the birds. So these are two of my zebra fringe pairs. I've got their nest boxes in now. There's the two cockatiels. That cage at the top are baby zebra finches to be rehomed. That's Sunny, the mum of the chicks, and Pluto is the blue the blue boy. There he is. This is Luna. She's a budgie with French malt, so she can't go into the main aviary. And then finally I've got those other pair of pied and white zebra finches. So I'm just taking it easy today. I'm not pushing myself, not trying to do anything in particular. Just enjoying my uh, my bird room. Happy winter solstice, guys. I'm so excited that it's December the 21st. It's officially the shortest daylight hours of the year. And now we're gonna get longer daylight hours. As you can see, Everything is still very barren here. Um, I can't wait for it to start warming up so things can start growing. Probably the only thing that looks good at the moment is this cornice, uh, which is looking nice and fiery red. Next year it'll look even better because it'll have more stems. There are also a couple of flowers. So I've got a pink cyclamen going here and I've got the white cyclamen going there. But for the most part, the gardening and the plants are looking rather 
dismal. Plus, the cobbles are looking awful as well. Plus the stones are. So next year I need to go along all these bricks and clean them. I probably need to get some more stones because they've just got so covered in mud from me tramping up and down to the chickens constantly. Um, but I'm looking forward to things like this, this geranium, when this starts setting up buds. In fact, you can see in here, there's some greenery. Now, as soon as we get some nice weather, these herbaceous perennials will start springing up again and giving me a bit of gardening life. But as it is, happy December 1st, and let's look forward to uh, lengthening daylight hours. I thought we would catch up with the quails, because we haven't seen the quails for a while. So they are outside, um, and they've been perfectly fine outside in the cold. The one thing that's kind of not been nice for them is the mud. This has got very muddy, and I've had to scrape all the mud out. But you can see up here, obviously, there's still mud. So I need to have a proper good wash and clean out of this. I mean, the quails don't really care about this, this mud, but it just doesn't look very nice. Um, now, they are kept in the aviary and the shed. So this shed has a pop hole where they can go in and out and get out of the cold if they want to and out the rain. Um, because what happens is, like, this little girl here has got a little bit muddy. Uh, so I probably will pick her up and just go and wash some of that mud off because any mud on the feathers um, does limit their ability to insulate themselves. Um, so if you have got any ones with sort of mud on the wings and stuff, it's best to take them in, give them a little quick wash, let them dry off and then pop them back out. Um, the girls that I hatch later in the year have been really, really good in production, uh, egg production. Um, so even though they don't normally lay because of the, the lower hours of daylight at the moment, those younger girls have actually been laying, which has been great. I love this little boy right here. Will you make a little cockerel? Will you crow? He's not going to, is he? So that is the quails, they're all very, very happy. Even though it's the middle of winter. We're down with the uh, laying flock. Here's one of my lovely exchequer leghorns. I think she might have been pooed on in the night by somebody roosting above her. Um, we're still not completely sure about what to do with the fox. Um, I've decided I just had to get over the risk of worrying about them in the daytime because it, you cannot keep them in that shed all the time. It's just not uh, good welfare. They have to come out. I've never seen a fox in the daylight come here. Um, they would have to come through a lot of open houses and a lot of urban traffic ways to get here in the day from where their den is, uh, which I think is right over that way. Um, so I've got to risk it. Um, in terms of guard animals, I've still not decided what to do because I was talking about guard goose, but they can be very, very loud. Hello, monkey. What are you doing? Um, the other thing I'm considering is there's no getting away from the fact that I have a fox coming into the garden almost every single night. Uh, I actually had to call a silky yesterday because she had a stroke and she couldn't walk. Um, so I had to colour and I completely forgot about Mr Foxy. I left her in a, pl a plastic bag outside the back door ready to put her into the coop, uh, into the bin rather. Um, Foxy came in the night and took her. So it just shows that Foxy is coming every single night. Now, the conundrum is feeding foxes. There is obviously the, the rule of thought that if you leave food out for foxes, they will take the easy option. So rather than trying to break into your coop, they will take the food they're left. So I am considering that as an option at the moment to try and uh, ease, the, ease the situation because there's no getting past the point, the fact that there is a fox here. And he's going to keep coming. And if he's hungry every single night, he's going to keep trying to break in to my chickens. Whereas if he comes to the garden, he finds some food, he takes the food and goes, could be better. Uh, obviously, when we're on the farm, it'll be a different fact, a different matter entirely. Um, we'll have guardian animals, um, probably a gun license and things like that. Um, so yeah, so but everybody is fairly happy, as you can see. They love the fact that it's dry and it's not muddy. Um, so yes, let me know your thoughts on Foxy Loxy and leaving food out as a sort of deterrent to trying to get them to um, not attack your chickens. 
Happy Christmas Eve, everyone. I can't believe we've got here so fast. Um, I apologise for the lack of videos this past week. We've had illness in our, in our house. Um, so although I managed to do the small holding diary segments each day, um, I haven't managed to put any of the big videos together um, because we've had this coffee, fluey, achy thing. Still not completely better. So I'm quite glad that I'm not going anywhere uh, tomorrow. Um, we're keeping it really, really simple here. We're having a homegrown Christmas dinner. So a homegrown chicken. Uh, it's one of the Ixworths um, that the fox didn't get. Um, and root vegetables, so carrots, beets, par uh, turnips um, that are still in the garden um, and then a few pieces of um, some nice kale as well. And I think for pudding we're going to have like a, crisp, uh, like a crumble, an apple crumble thing um, with apples that I scavenged earlier this year. So the only thing I've actually had to buy is kind of the butter and stuff to make that crumble uh, top. So that's quite good. So I hope wherever you are in the world and whatever you're doing, you manage to sit down and take a break um, and just enjoy life for a moment. Um, I will see you again uh, hopefully next week um, and then we'll crack on with 2018 and all the things that are going to happen. So have a fantastic Christmas from me, from Saad, from all the animals at Brimwood Farm and I will see you very soon. Bye.